Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can estimate the length of a trip just by doing some quick distance measurements. So let's go ahead and do this. So what I'm using here is the website skyvector.com, which is kind of the gold standard for a lot of these, you know, area charts and things like that. You can also use a little nav map for this or pretty much any software that you can measure depending on what you're trying to achieve. So what we're going to do is we're going to plan a quick flight. Well, let's go ahead and start from home airport of Hartford. And let's say we're going up to, I don't know, we'll make it kind of interesting. We'll do CYYZ which is going to be way, 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 way over there. Also, Rush. So this particular flight here is going to be taking us on a distance of 329 nautical miles. Now, one of the cool things about Sky Vector, for those of you who have not played with it before, is it has a pretty effective tool up here for measuring how long our flight is going to do. So let's assume we're traveling at uh, 182 speeds, and again, I'm just guessing here. One, eh, that's impossible, 065. So you can see it gives me a rough estimate of about 2 hours and 54 minutes in order to cover that particular distance. Now, if you didn't have that and you were trying to do some planning of maybe I want to do a half an hour flight, how far can we get in a half an hour kind of a thing. One of the methods that I like to use is to simply take the cruise speed, use half of it for the climb, and then half of it for the descent. So for example, we have a distance of 330 miles. I'll go ahead and get this one, 330 nautical miles. We know that our cruise speed, our cruise time, is going to be probably about 95% of the flight. So for example, if I take 330 multiplied by 0.95, it's going to give me about 313 nautical miles at cruise speed. That also means that it's going to give us about 27, if you can count properly, you'd be able to do this properly, you know, it's going to be about 17 nautical miles of climb time. Again, this is all going to be a rough estimate as well as descent. Keep in mind, descent, you're cruising at the same speed that you're cruising at essentially. So we know that we're going to be spending, like I said, about 95% of our flight at our cruise speed. Because we know that, all we have to know is what our cruise speed is. So for example, if we have a 150 knot cruise speed, how long is it going to take to travel 313 nautical miles. So 313, which is our distance, divided by our speed, is going to give us a rough estimate of our time. So we can see here we're looking at about 2.08. So again, this is all really, really back at the envelope, but it's kind of a great way to sort of estimate. So 2.08, if you want to be really specific, you can come in here and grab the 8 times 60. That's going to be 2 hours and 5 minutes or so is going to be roughly how long it's going to take me to cover that distance. Now that climb, remember at climb, you're probably going to be moving at about 70% of of your cruise speed, depending, of course, what aircraft you're dealing. Sometimes it's as low as 50% of your cruise speed, depending on what style climb you're doing. Since we said before we're estimating 150 knots, we can just build that right into the calculation. So how long does it take to travel 17 miles? Well, if you do 17 divided by 150, you can see that it's going to take 0.11 of an hour, or if I multiply it by 60, it's going to be about 6.8 minutes in order to cover that time. Total is going to be roughly, uh, you can probably estimate 2 hours, 10 minutes for that particular flight. So you can see that just doing that quick little calculation gives you a really, really good idea. Now, one of the things I like about calculations like this is you can actually flip it the other way around. I can ask myself a simple question. Um, I want to make a flight that's one hour long. Uh, how far is that? Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll come over here with their calculators. Uh, they'll go ahead and say, well, I'm doing 150 knots. So 150 knots means it's going to be 150 knots in an hour. But remember, your 150 knots is at cruise speed. You still have to climb. There's still going to be, you know, the Michigas of kind of, you know, landing and getting your traffic pattern and stuff like that. So again, you can just multiply that by 0.95 to have a rough idea of what distance you're going to be at cruise speed at. Again, there's going to be other variables and winds and things. This is just back of the envelope. So we can automatically estimate that if we want to travel an hour, we can expect to have that for about 95% of our flight, which is going to give us about 142 total miles, which is going to be not too bad of an estimate as far as, you know, how far we're going to be able to achieve in that amount of time. Now, if you're over in little nav map, it's a little different. In little nav map, we have some other tools at our disposal to make this a little bit easier. Namely, uh, we've talked about this in other videos, but you can set up performance files and it'll actually roughly estimate. You know, if you have a performance file, I can say this is my departure. I'll come over here and say that this is my arrival. And what this will do is this will quickly go ahead and generate just how far that's going to be. And it's going to give me a rough estimate of about an hour 18. Now, keep in mind, this is only as accurate as that file. And the whole purpose of this video is to show you how you can roughly estimate these values rather than try to get them laser guided. Another thing you can do that works really, really well in the little nav map is you can create range rings. 
rings. Now, these range rings are fantastic because you can design them both in terms of distance as well as design them in terms of time. So my current range rings here are actually calibrated to be 50 nautical miles wide. So for example, if I knew I was planning a one hour flight, after creating these range rings, by the way, the easiest way to do that is you can just hold down the shift and you click on the map and it creates your range rings. We can just sit here and go, we can go about three range rings out. So if I'm like, oh, I wanna start here at Echo Papa Whiskey Alpha, I can find my third range ring and try to find an airport that is along that ring that I know is gonna be about an hour away at about 150 knots. Remember that climb aspect can really slow you down as can the weather. So one of the things you can actually do in Little Nav Map, which is great, is if you go to the map, you can actually dial in the range rings. So for example, if I knew that I was running at a much slower speed, I could come in here and actually build exactly one ring that is a specific distance. Another fun thing you can do in Little Nav Map, we're not gonna take a look at that today, is you can actually do searches for airports within a certain range. So not only can you do it visually like this, but you can actually have the algorithm run around and kind of check it out. So again, the super rough version, take your cruise speed, multiply it by 0.95. Uh, that's gonna be roughly how what your average speed is, work about how far you wanna go per the hour, and then you should have yourself a pretty good estimate. Enjoy.